Welcome to my lecture online. To get the maximum efficiency out of a generator, it makes sense to build it like this. We're talking about three-phase generators, and so these are the, mo the more common types of three-phase generators. Notice inside the stator we have six of these knobs instead of three, which means that each voltage provided has a coil around two of the knobs that are opposite of one another. So notice we have the red line here, V sub A, which has a coil here and a coil there. We have V sub B, which has a coil here and a coil here, and V sub C, which has a coil here and a coil here. Now, how are they connected? Notice we run a line from the output on VA. We coil the wire around here, then the wire continues over there, coils around the wire here, and on the end of that is connected to the neutral line. Same for B. B is connected to this coil right here, goes around, then the wire goes to the other knob right here, we have a coil around there, and then the end of that goes to neutral. And for VC here, notice we have a coil around here, the wire then goes over to here, there's a coil, then it goes and connects to neutral. So all three of the voltage outputs have a wire that coils twice, one's over here, one's over there for the red, for the green over here, and for the blue over here. Secondly, we have the phase diagram right here, at least we have the diagram that gives us the voltage as a function of time. And notice there's numbers associated with that with the position of the rotor. The rotor will rotate around like this. And notice if we keep track of where the south portion of the magnet is inside the rotor, notice that this position right here corresponds to the south being over here. Notice we have maximum flux going through the coil but the voltage at that point is zero because the change in the flux at that very moment in time is equal to zero. The EMF produced by a rotor like this is equal to the negative of the change in the magnetic flux going through the coil as a function of time. And at this very moment, the change is zero, so therefore the voltage will be zero. As the rotor continues to rotate, the change increases, the EMF reduced gets to a maximum, and then eventually reaches back to zero when the south has then gone completely over here. And so from now, the north will be down here, the south will be up there, and then you'll see that the, the phase, the red phase here, the A phase, will be at this point in time when the south of the rotor is over there. We can look at the rotor being at the green. Notice that after this is 120 degrees, the rotor will be over here, at least the south portion of the rotor will be over there, which is when you have uh, this coil right here. So when the south is over here, just like with the red phase, the green phase will be on its way to its maximum value when the rotor has this position right here. When the rotor gets back over here, then we'll be at position number five, and then we have zero voltage on its way to the maximum negative value of, of the output voltage. And finally, we have the blue coils right here when the SAT rotor is over here. Notice that's at number six. When the SAT is over here, we have, let's see, am I doing this correctly here? Uh, let, let's first go through the SAT being at number three. The SAT being number, being, if the SAT rotates all the way around and gets to this point right here, notice we're at this point in our phase. We have zero voltage off that phase, but we're going up to the maximum value where we're 90 degrees past that point. Then we get to the point number six. That's when we're over here on our graph, and we're at, again, zero voltage, and we're on the way down. So you can see that all three of these act at 120 degree phase differences to one another, and when the rotor goes all the way around, we're back to square one, and we start over again on our voltage phase process. So you can see that if these are nicely placed at 60 degree separation distance, there's six of them, six times six is 360 degrees, and the opposite, knobs have the coils that are associated with one another, then we have a perfect three-phase system which runs very smooth, which has a maximum current delivery, a maximum power delivery for the complexity of the, um, of the generator. There's also generators that have nine of these, so that means that there'll be three knobs associated with a particular color. Again, the more knobs you put, the more coils you have, the more power it can produce for a given rotor, for a given generator, but then it becomes more complex to build, and then there's a trade-off between the complexity of the generator, the complexity of the motors, and the, and the benefit that you get out of it by going from a six-knob system to a nine-knob system. They're all three-phase generators, but they become more complex. And so this is then the most common type of three-phase generators. And by the way, if you can hear that, that's one of our cats. 
complaining about something. I don't know what. We'll have to go check it out. And that's how it's done.